According to Forbes, Amazon founder Jeff Bezos has a staggering fortune, he's the richest man in the world, worth about $108 billion. And he's been busy. Just in the last year, Amazon acquired Whole Foods, began allowing Amazon Prime members to watch its movies and TV shows on Apple TV, created a camera that can help you pick out nicer outfits, was granted patents for delivery drones with wings and legs and much more. But back in 1994, when a 30-year-old, newly married Bezos quit his Wall Street job to start Amazon, the business was pretty simple. It sold books. Bezos tells technology blog GeekWire, when we opened our doors, we had 10 employees. I was driving the packages to the post office myself in my 1987 Chevy Blazer and dreaming one day that we might have a forklift. Only three years later, in 1997, Amazon went public and Bezos' wealth catapulted to over $12 billion. But you wouldn't have known it by the newly minted billionaire's car. Despite his windfall, Bezos swapped out his 1987 Chevy Blazer for only a modest upgrade, a Honda Accord. That's according to a profile CBS's Bob Simon did of Bezos in 1999 for 60 Minutes, recently resurfaced by GeekWire, showing Bezos sporting khakis, a button-down and driving the car. Simon asks Bezos, what's with the Honda? After a laugh, Bezos, who owned roughly $10 billion in Amazon stock in 1999, responds, this is a perfectly good car. During the interview, Simon also discovered Amazon's then headquarters in Seattle shared a street address with pawn shop, a heroin needle exchange and a porno parlor. And inside, Bezos' desk was made out of a repurposed wooden door and two by four pieces of wood. In fact, the entire company used desks made of doors as deliberate message. Why so frugal? Bezos explains to Simon, it's a symbol of spending money on things that matter to customers and not spending money on things that don't. By 2004, Amazon employees were still using door desks, notes Fast Company. And in 2013, according to Brad Stone's book, The Everything Store, Bezos was still driving a Honda, though a slightly bigger model. Today, Amazon has a $620 billion market cap and reported $43.7 billion in revenue during its third quarter in 2017 alone, a 34% increase from the same quarter in 2016. Bezos has some bigger extravagances, like multiple homes, a private jet and Blue Origin. Yet, frugality remains one of Amazon's core principles and the company sticks by Bezos' early mentality. Amazon even gives out an accolade called the DoorDesk Award to employees who come up with ideas that save money. According to Amazon, constraints breed resourcefulness, self-sufficiency and invention. CNBC's Laura Kolodny reported that despite Tesla's ambitions to run a highly automated manufacturing process, Tesla has been being forced to perform some battery assembly steps in its Nevada Gigafactory by hand, borrowing scores of employees from its battery partner, Panasonic, to do it. It sounds like a big headache for the Palo Alto car maker until you notice one key detail. The article is talking about the state of Tesla's manufacturing operation as recently as mid-December. In December, Tesla and Panasonic workers were manually assembling bandoliers, rows of lithium-ion cells glued on either side of a cooling tube. It's a tricky task to complete by hand, so the manual assembly led to a lot of errors and waste. But more recently, Kolodny acknowledges, Tesla has begun to ramp up production, Kolodny reports, citing anonymous sources at the factory, once the machines in the factory were able to crank out bandoliers as fast or faster than the manual laborers, Tesla began sending Panasonic workers back to their employer. Today, Tesla is winding down manual assembly as much as possible at the Gigafactory.
In other words, this seems to be a story of Tesla fixing a production bottleneck and ramping up production even though the headline gives the opposite impression. To be fair, one engineer told CNBC that a lack of spare capacity leads to frequent shutdowns, there's no redundancy, so when one thing goes wrong, everything shuts down. But automated production with frequent shutdowns is better than manual assembly. And this is presumably a problem Tesla can fix in the coming months. It's important to remember the broader context here. Tesla is notorious for setting ambitious deadlines for itself and then failing to hit them. For example, in 2009, Tesla was planning to ship the Model S in 2011, but the start of production wound up slipping to mid-2012. Tesla then set a goal to produce 5,000 vehicles during that first calendar year, but only managed to produce 3,100. But Tesla ultimately did figure out how to produce the Model S in significant volume, and the car became Tesla's biggest success story. Production of the Model 3 has gotten off to an even slower start than the Model S. The company only managed to produce about 1,800 Model 3s in the third and fourth quarters of 2017. But Tesla has significant financial resources. It can afford a few months delay if it's ultimately able to perfect its production process. And the CNBC report suggests that Tesla has made significant progress in that direction over the last month. Production processes that had been performed manually in December are becoming increasingly automated. Tesla still has a long way to go to manufacture the 400,000 Model 3s that customers have already ordered not to mention making them cheaply enough to turn a profit. But Elon Musk has no shortage of persistence and determination. We're not going to count him out yet. With over a dozen options already available, Holiday Automotive is welcoming more arrivals of 2018 Chevy Silverado 1500 trucks. Prospective truck buyers from the Fond du Lac area or surrounding areas such as Beaver Dam and Slinger can get behind the wheel of the latest Silverado 1500 at Holiday Automotive. The latest Silverado 1500 offers several options to prospective truck buyers. Not only are there a total of seven trim levels, but the truck also offers three cab options and three bed length options. The choice between regular cab, double cab and crew cab allows the Silverado 1500 to accommodate anywhere from three to six passengers comfortably. With Wisconsin weather, Holiday Automotive knows what area truck buyers want. That's why most of the dealership's truck inventory is comprised of four-wheel drive options. With four-wheel drive, drivers tend to get better traction during acceleration especially when driving the truck empty on slick, icy or snowy road surfaces. Under the hood, the Silverado sports multiple engine options including a 5.3-liter V8 engine that delivers V8 performance with 355 horsepower and 383 pound-feet torque, while still providing V6 efficiency with 18 city MPG and 24 highway MPG. An available 6.2-liter V8 engine allows the Silverado to tow up to 12,500 pounds making it more than capable for most jobs. Inquiries regarding the 2018 Silverado 1500 and other Chevy and GM models can be directed toward the Holiday Automotive team at 855-200-4348. The Fond du Lac Chevy dealership is located at 321 North Rolling Meadows Drive. Further information about the dealership and its inventory can be found at www.holidayautomotive.com. First introduced in 2014, the fourth-generation Honda City sedan is due for a full model change next year. Paulton, a Malaysian automotive website, has come up with a speculative render showing what the fifth-generation Honda City could look like. The renderer assumes that the new city sedan will have styling cues seen on the Honda Insight. The next-gen car promises to become sharper-looking while retaining the no-typical Honda front-end styling. 
the car's profile is expected to remain similar to what the current version sports. The rear of the new car is also expected to showcase a fresh new look, again with plenty of chrome as chrome means premium in India. As is the case with the Ford Chalifted City, the new car will get full LED projector headlamps and daytime running lights. Since the Indian car market loves chrome, there will be dollops of chrome on the front end. The car is expected to gain a hybrid option on the 1.5-liter IVTEC petrol engine. Such an option is already available on the JDM spec Honda Jazz. The 1.5-liter turbocharged diesel engine will continue but with engineering changes to make it Bharat Stage 6 emission norms compliant. 5-speed manual and CVT gearboxes will continue with the petrol, while the petrol hybrid engine is expected to be CVT only. The diesel is also expected to retain the 6-speed manual gearbox. More than space on the inside, the already spacious city is expected to get a lot of feature additions. The new model will continue to sit in a similar price band where it is presently. This is because Honda is bringing the Civic to India and there needs to be sufficient price gap between the two cars. The new city will try to tempt amaze buyers into upgrading. Existing city owners are expected to upgrade to the Civic, which is launching in India next year.